Okay, in this video, I want to convince you that the definition of the conditional statement, P implies Q, uh, is correct. Uh, and here we have that definition, and here is the point of contention here. Students often um, think that this these two should be false here, not true. And so the point of this video is to convince you that, no, in fact, they should be true. Okay. All right, so to get started, I want to first uh, ha give an, a completely uh, unrelated example. And I'll use that example at the very end to, um, to give you my best explanation for uh, why these have to be true here. Now I'll give you a number of explanations uh, in this video. I'll give you, let's see, um, four different explanations for why these have to be true. Uh, but uh, the best one I can give is, is the one is the one I'll give you at the very end, the fourth one. And uh, to motivate that fourth um, that fourth uh, explanation, uh, I'm going to give you an example that is completely unrelated, has nothing to do with conditional statements or conditional propositions. All right, okay, so let's go on with, let's go ahead and work on that. So I'll go ahead and, go ahead and work on that one. Okay. So here's my unrelated example. All right, so we all know that uh, that x to the zero is equal to one, is equal to one. Now you may have uh, in your mathematical training said to yourself, now why is that? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and the answer is, it has to be. There's just really nothing else for x to, the, x to the zero to be. It has to be one. We can't have it be anything else. And let me show you how uh, why that is. Okay, let's say that n is some number, right? Or we can actually pick a number. Let's just, just use uh, the number two. Uh, two, as we know, is equal to two plus zero. Okay, so that tells us that x squared is equal to x to the 2 plus 0, which is equal, by our rules of exponents, that's equal to x squared. I know my 2s look like a z, but that's, that's it. That is actually a 2. OK. Okay, disregard that. Okay, so now let's think about what do we find here, right? Okay, now uh, I guess uh, the thing to that I should say is that uh, um, remember that uh, these this is the same base here, right? Same base. You add the exponents. That's how um, that's you've done that a lot in probably in other classes. Uh, calc one. Usually in calc one, you're going this direction, right? You have two things at the same base, you give them the same, you put them together, but equals works both directions, so we can go this way, too. Okay, so what do we find here? we found that x squared is equal to x squared times x to the zero. And so uh, that means that uh, it, you know, if our rules of exponents are correct, and our rules of exponents are correct because they're really just notation, uh, we could talk about that later at some point, but um, 
our rules of exponents have to be correct, right? So, um, so this shows us that there's really nothing else for x to the zero to be, right? Because here we have something x squared times x to the zero equals itself back, right? So there's really nothing else for x to the zero has to be one. Now we could take this a step further. Um, I could take this a step further to make this, uh, maybe to convince you even more. And that is we could divide both sides by x squared. Cancel, cancel, and you get one is equal to x to the zero. Okay, but the main point here is that why is x to the zero equal to one? Because it has to be. There's just nothing else for it to be. Okay. All right. So now before, um, okay, so, so the next thing I need to say, uh, the next point I need to make is that the conditional statement P implies Q, you should think of it as one whole thing. All right, it is one whole thing. It's not the statement P, it's not the statement Q, or the proposition P, it's not the proposition Q. It's the proposition or statement created by putting them both together in such a way that has the truth table that you're shown in the reading, the truth table that I gave at the beginning of this video. All right, so it's the conditional statement is a whole thing in and of itself. It's not P, it's not Q, it's P implies Q. It's if P then Q. All right, and a, a one way to think of it is it's a contract. It's the contract. If you do P, then Q happens. If you don't do P, well, then you've still upheld the contract. Okay, so let's go to the, now let's go to our Zy book. Pausing just long enough to see that, uh, that I have Peppa world on my, on my iPad, as well as ice cream cake. Those are, those are for my daughter. Yeah, I, 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 of course, <laughs> for, for my daughter. All right, here we are uh, at the Zy book. Uh, you'd see this in uh, 1.3 in the Zy book, in our course textbook. Okay, and it just so happens that it's Mr. Smith. Um, it's this isn't me, but I, I do have a lawn, and it, it does need to be mowed. All right, so here's another ex. Here's a here's another explanation for why we have our conditional statement defined the way it has to be. Okay, so you think of the think of it as a contract. P implies Q. Okay, so now look in the uh, upper left corner there, right? The upper left corner of the box, right? P implies Q is true. So, um, so you mow my lawn and I pay you. So we've upheld the contract. That's true. It's true that the true is upheld contract. False is break contract. So it's true that we upheld the contract. Um, and now upper right, uh, you mow my lawn, but I don't pay you. So we've broken the contract. That's why it's false. True is we upheld the contract. False we did uh, is the negation of upholding the contract. That's breaking the contract. Okay, the lower uh, left box. Um, you did not mow my lawn, so the contract was never um, the contract was it was never broken. The contract was if you mow my lawn, then I will pay you. And similarly, if you do not mow my lawn, 
um, and I do not pay you, still, uh, we have upheld the contract. All right, so maybe you don't like this explanation very much, and to be perfectly honest, I don't really like this one, this explanation particularly well either. This is, uh, this is just a one way of trying to get students to, to, uh, to believe that our definition of conditional statement is correct. All right, now let's go back to sketchbook. All right, so let me give you yet another explanation aimed at convincing you that you should believe that the definition of conditional statement is correct. All right, so let me draw out my truth table again for P implies Q. Now the only time it's false is here. Okay, and the rest are always true. This is the only time that the contract was voided. All right, but let's just say that uh, maybe, let's just say that uh, for the sake of argument real fast, let's just say that, hey, we decided that, eh, we'll let the students have it their way. We'll make this these false. Then notice that this looks exactly like the truth table for and. All right. Um, and, Certainly, if P then Q should be different than P and Q, right? It should be a different thing. If P then Q should be different than and, right? So it doesn't make sense for those to be false. Okay. All right, so that's why we must have it. So that's yet another way why we must have, why we must have uh, another explanation, why we must have P implies Q defined as it is. All right, let me change these back. All right, so now for the best explanation that I can give at this point in the semester. The reason why P implies Q must be defined as it is right here is because there's just no other way to do it. Similarly to how X to the zero has to be one, there's just nothing else for it to be. Um, when we use logic, when we do logic, and as we do logic throughout the semester, you will see cases uh, where this comes up and I will, and I will point that out. Um, as we do, as we move through this semester, I will point out, do you see here why uh, P implies Q must be defined the way it is? There's just no other way for it to be. And so that's the best explanation I can give you right now, is that it's, it's just the best way, it's the only way that P implies Q can be defined. And that's why we define it that way. All right, so now if, if all of this so if all of this seems really gray and fuzzy to you, don't worry, no big deal. All you gotta do is memorize this. Just memorize this definition. And as the semester rolls on, you will see many examples why it has to be this way. All right, but at this point, just memorize it.